Ho, 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 my little pretties. It's your mistress, the Queen of Lions here. And welcome to episode 47 of Shadows and Pretties. And welcome to to episode 47. Yes, we are halfway to 100. Well, nearly there. It'll be 50 by then. So today, we're doing another Christmas special, which is a kind of like a short film, stop motion Christmas television program. It, yes, it's by the same people who did the Rankin Boss uh, Rudolph one. Today we are going to do another one that they animated called Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Well, I could definitely say I remembered watching this as a young kid. I could definitely, you know, say that. I remembered watching this on YouTube, Daily Motion, and lots of other areas where they have this movie. And, you know, to be honest, I loved this movie when I was a young kid growing up. Now, even though they were... A few flaws with it. It's still a pretty well made um special. I really do like how this special was and you know how it came to be. Now most of you guys as kids probably have seen this, you know, being aired on TV at certain televisions. Some of you guys might have had it on VHS and others. You might have had this on DVD, but yeah, comment down below and let me know what you all think. Like the characters of this are pretty amazing, well done, well made, and I could really say that I remember seeing this movie when I was younger growing up. Now, with that being said, I am going to go ahead and sit there and explain what this movie is about, just for you guys if you want to know what it is. So, whoa, my goodness, this is a very old story. Like, it's like 50 years old. I believe it's 50 years old. Like, holy crap. Now, this one was just around the time where Christmas was coming up. So since today is Christmas, Merry Christmas to you all, my little pretties. I thought, you know what, I'll go ahead and start off with this movie. Now, with that being said, I will be doing the first episode of Shadows and Pretties in 2021 whenever I take a look at it. But, you know, I'm still going to do Shadows and Pretties episodes till, you know, till the day I die, basically. So... With that being said, I am going to sit here and say right now that I really do like this game. And of course, they do have a video game that was released in November 8th, 2011 for Nintendo DS and Wii, which I'm not going to be getting too much into the game because it's basically kind of like the same thing. So with that being said, I guess I could sit there and, you know, explain, you know, certain stuff. So... With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and explain what the movie is about. I'm just going to warn you all right now that I'm going to be spoiling pretty much everything about Santa Claus is coming to town. So with that being said, if you are don't want me to spoil it, I highly recommend you click off this video if you don't want to hear me spoil. So with that being said, um, I guess I can, you know, get started with, you know, the video. So if you happen to be brand new on this here on this channel, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. So, of course, this is in its 50th anniversary. So, with that being said, this is to honor Santa Claus is coming to town for its 50th anniversary. So, with that being said, Ed, let's get started. And yes, the Rankin Boss, this is the Rankin Boss one, that is just the same as people who made, you know, Rudolph and... A bunch of other stuff. So, with that being said, I think we should all go ahead and begin and let me get on with the plot. So, basically, this happens to a special delivery by S.D. Kergler named the Newsreel Prologue, telling the viewer of how children around the world are preparing their arrival for Santa Claus. When his mail truck breaks down, he tells a story about Santa Claus by answering the children's letters to Santa. So the story begins on a gloomy city of Sombertown, ruled by an ill-tempered burgemeister. Yes, the burgemeister was a real asshole, but, you know, I'm sure you can all agree. 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 Burgemeister. Our baby arrives on his doorstep with a name tag, Claus, and a note requesting the burgemeister to raise the child. That he orders his law keeper, Grimsley, to take the baby to an orphan asylum, or the orphanage. And yes, I'm pretty sure orphanage just still exist, but if you guys do know if they still exist or not, feel free to let me know in the comments below because I would really like to hear your thoughts and opinions on that. So, on the way there, a gust of wind blow both blows the sled and the baby to the mountains of Whispery Winds, where animals hide him from the winter warlock and cover him by the, the into a family of Christmas elves by the name, name of Kringle family as the first toy makers to the king. 
So, of course, they take the baby in, in and, of course, led by their matron, Tang uh, Kringle, the family adopts the baby and calls him Chris. So, a few years later, Chris hopes to restore the Kringle family as the first toy makers to the king. So, when Chris was old enough, he volunteers to deliver the elves' toys to Sombertown. When, meanwhile, the Burgermeister has banned all toys in towns and declared that anyone found possessing the toy will be arrested. <laughs> What a stupid law that the Burgermeister did with this. Like, how could you make a, how could you make a law saying, that, oh, you can't play with toys, you're going to get arrested like that? Like, that, that, that that's just stupid. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm glad that law does not exist because if it ever did, we would, we would probably be fighting it because that would be just stupid. Now, like, it's kind of like banning, you know, certain video games, like, like, if a certain country wants to ban video games, well, okay, that's totally fine with them. But I think it's still stupid, so... Okay, I'm sorry I'm kind of ranting a little bit. I know this is not supposed to be a rant-centered, but the Burgermeister is just an idiot in this. It's just so amusing that he was acting like an idiot in there, but the voice acting for him did a really damn good job. So with that being said, on his way to Silvertown, Chris meets a lost penguin whom names to be Trooper in town, and he offers toys to two children washing their stockings by a water fountain. When, of course, Miss Jessica, their lovely school teacher, shows up, and she tells them, don't you know that the toys are against the law? And then Chris Kringle's like, oh, that's just a stupid old law anyway. Yeah, I would but kind of be scoffing like that, saying, well, that's just a stupid old law. Like, who the hell would sit there and make a law so stupid like that? I can... See, you know, I could go cat down to stupid laws in certain countries, and then the video would probably be more longer than it already is. So, with that being said, um, basically what happens is when she softens towards Chris, when he offers her a china doll as a peace offering. As Chris gives him more toys, the Burgermeister arrives, and Chris gives him a yo-yo. But the Burgermeister happily plays with it, but of course he's breaking his own law. Da! What a stupid idiot he was. So, the Burgermeister orders Chris captured, but of course, Chris and Trooper return to the Kringles as the Winter Warlock captures them. But when Chris gives him a toy train as a present, the Warlock's evil exterior melts and he befriends Chris and repay him. Richard unites with Chris and Jessica, who informs that the Burgermeister has destroyed all the toys and the children now request it for new ones. Yeah, if the Burgermeister didn't, ab didn't ban toys, then... Nothing would be, you know, too much of a big deal. So, with that being said, had it done. However, to protect the town from further toy deliveries, the Burgermeister orders all doors and windows to be locked, but Chris enters the, the chimneys and places toys in the children's on stockings. So, the Burgermeister sets a trap for Chris and Trooper as he makes another delivery while his soldiers capture the Kringles in winter. So, Jessica pleads the Burgermeister to release the friends, but, however, he refuses. Yeah, what a jerk he was. But in coming to the prison, Jessica asks Winter to break everyone out, but he sadly, having little magic except some magic feed, feed corn, which enables the reindeers to fly. Within the reindeer's help, the group escape, and after months after an outlaw, a discovery at that their home that the, was destroyed by the Burgermeister's guards. Now Chris, however, grows a beer in disguise, and after Tanja suggests that he returns his birth name to Claus for safety, Chris then marries Jessica, and after the ceremony, the group travels to the North Pole to build their castle and toy workshop. So as the years pass, Chris and Jessica grow older, and Chris only travels at night until the master, the Meisterburgers have died off, and Chris's legend goes worldwide, having become the Santa Claus that he is unable to fulfill the toy requests throughout the year. However, with that being said, his reserves and efforts for it to be on Christmas Eve. So, at the end of of the story, Kluger realizes that it was getting late and he still has delivers to Santa, so he drives off. So that's basically the whole plot of this movie. So, what did I think of this movie? It's a really good, good, um, really good storyline and it's a pretty good, um, concept. I'm definitely saying right now, I could definitely say it's actually a pretty interesting, interesting film. So, with that being said, it's a pretty well made, um, Christmas special, and I think. For children who are younger, they should really take a look at it as it's a pretty well-made made concept with it. So I could definitely say, what did I actually think of this movie? Well, I could definitely say, 
I really do like this special. This special was actually really cute and well made and it was very well detailed. Now I could definitely say about this plot of this is actually pretty, pretty awesome. Now I could definitely understand, you know, the Burgermeister is getting tired of the toys, but why don't he just sit there and just ignore the children and just do his own thing? And if they, if he steps on a toy or hurts himself, he could just ask them politely, the kids, you know, just to pick them up and put them away or something. But, you know, the Burgermeister was a total idiot in the whole film, but I could definitely say it was actually a pretty good idea that he was actually in it. Despite the fact that, you know, I don't like him, which I'm sure most of you guys don't like the Burgermeister. I'm sure most of you guys don't. But I could definitely say he was a really loving, funny character. Not really loving, but funny character with that being said. So, with that being said, I'm going to say right now that I really do like how the concept of this this to be rather made. Like, it was basically really funny, really well made. And I just have to say... When I first saw this, I was honestly, like, really amazed to see that this film actually would, did pretty good. Yes, it just did as good as well as the Rankin Boss Rudolph and the Little Drummer Boy and etc. I could definitely say, this actually did a pretty good job with the whole, you know, concept of this story. Now, I could definitely understand that if you guys really don't like this, um, episode, well, not episode, but, like, this, um, special... That's understandable because I'm free to respect your opinion as long as you respect my opinion. Like, where I'm going to say, this is simply my own personal opinion, and if you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. Now, with that being said, I definitely have to say, I watched this on TV a lot when I was a kid, and I have to say, it's a really good story, and it tells a lot about, about how Santa became Chris before. I'm not even sure if the story is, like, really true, but I could definitely say it was a pretty interesting, well-made story. And the concept of it just helped out really well and well done. Now, I'm going to say here right now that this is, was actually a really good episode. And I definitely have to say it was a really well-made story. Despite the fact that there were only a few flaws with it. And one of them being, you know, the Burgermeister being an idiot. But, you know, that's totally fine. Because, you know, the Burgermeister was an idiot the whole time anyway. So, no surprise there. <laughs> so... With that being said, I'm going to sit here and say that if you do like, um, if you do like this, um, episode of Shadows and Pretties, um, oh yeah, oh yeah, what was I going at? <laughs> well, anyways, my little pretties, I hope you have a really good Christmas today. Leave me down, the comments down below on how you're feeling, and to those who I won't be seeing until after Christmas, Happy New Year to you guys. So, with that being said, what did you guys think about this Christmas special? Show of Shadows and Pretties. And even the movie, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Did you all enjoy it? Did you not? Also, would we have done person to help make this movie or special a lot better? Leave me know what your thoughts are down in the comments section down below. And we are honoring this. It's 30, 50th anniversary by watching it. Which I'm going to be watching that, that later. So, with that being said. What did you guys think of this? Um, Well, I guess... Um, what did you guys think about this Christmas special? Did you all enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done person to help make this uh, special a lot better? Leave me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section down below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you happen to be brand new here on this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Uh, don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so then you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out of here. And I'll be catching you all in the next video, so Merry Christmas, everyone. And as always, I'll be seeing you all next time.